Yeah? She actually grabs? What's that? She actually grabs? Yeah. Wow. Loose. Dang. I guess that's a good thing. Yeah, I guess so. Right, see, ya. see you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Bridge doll. <laughs> Wanted to show you guys what I'm up to here. Replacing the alternator on the chassis engine here in this RV. This is my 95 Scenic Cruiser with an 8.3 Cummins diesel pusher. And one of my subscribers, or a subscriber, someone who commented, a while ago pointed out that it looked like the voltage gauge wasn't where it should be and i didn't really think anything of it i saw the comment and i looked at it and i thought you know eh, whatever but i noticed as it's getting colder this winter that things this thing's been cranking slower and slower so i decided to look into it and the alternator isn't putting out any more than 12.2 12.3 volts so i decided to go ahead and replace it I found this one on, I think it was like eBay or Amazon. I was fortunate enough to be able to get the part number off the old one and find a new one here. And I mean, this thing is massive. This is a huge alternator. This is by far the biggest alternator I've ever replaced. <laughs> I'll show you underneath here what we got going on. Had to take the air filter off, that intake pipe off. Get a few other little things out of the way. I think while I'm at it, I'm going to change that coolant filter because that looks like it hasn't been touched in a very long time. Here's a better view of the exhaust gas temperature probe that I put in. So that fit perfectly right there. And that all runs up front. Anyway, here's the old alternator here. I have the positive and negative cables disconnected. That's something I haven't seen on an alternator before is it has both positive and negative going to it. So I thought that was kind of neat. A while ago, I had to make a repair on this red wire here. So you can see it's got a newer uh, eyelet on it and uh, was able to save the connector. So that was a relief, but here's the old alternator. I got the belt off here. And a while ago, I thought I'd bring this up to you guys as well. That shop that I had all that trouble with on this thing um, when they replaced my belt and tensioner back here, which they charged me like $500 to do, I realized now how much I got screwed over by them for that price. I mean, that's ridiculous. There's absolutely nothing to this job. But they didn't tighten the AC compressor bolts, so that worked its way loose. So I had to tighten that up. Fortunately, it didn't damage anything back here, so we're all good. But I've got one more bolt here to take off. There's three on the alternator. You got two up top, then one on the bottom right here. I've got this little connector here disconnected, positive and negative disconnected, and the belt's off of the pulley. I am going to have to transfer the pulley because the new alternator does not come with the pulley, so that's going to be interesting. Hopefully my puller tool can get that off. Anyway, I'm going to take the last bolt out here. We're going to pull this old alternator out. go transfer the stuff over to the new one getting the pulley off was a lot easier than i expected i basically held the old alternator by the pulley here with one hand and uh quickly because it's super heavy <laughs> hit it a couple times with the hammer here on the shaft and uh that separated the pulley from the old alternator here and you can hear you know this thing's got a lot of use on it. it's pretty old You can hear the bearing noise. You go over here, the brand new one. It's nice and quiet. So, got a new uh, little keyway here. 
I guess this is just a protective shaft or an adapter or something. It was basically just on the new alternator like that, but they have the little keyway tape to it. And uh, that's to help keep the cooling fan here in place. This little fan just sits on it like so. Little keyway lines up there. And that's what cools the alternator. It just slides right off. So it's basically the reverse order of how we took it all apart. We'll put the fan on first with the little, little keyway here. And then we'll put our pulley back on. Clean that up a little bit so it goes on easily. And uh, then we put that nut back on. Then we'll install it back in the RV. We'll see if we've got good voltage again. Starting to get dark outside, but I've got the new pulley on. The nut's tight. The spacer's in. The fan is in. Spins perfectly smooth. Got the little connector back here on the back. And we're going to go put it back in the RV. Hook up the battery cables. Got positive and negative here, so we'll put, hook those up. I'm also going through and cleaning all the connecting surfaces with this wire brush and then putting some dielectric grease on it just to help make sure we get a perfectly clean contact with, with no other corrosives or anything in the way. So here's a new alternator installed. I put the positive cable here on first before I put this lower nut on. And the reason being is because once this is into place, that positive cable is behind the engine here, this, uh, this part of the engine, so you can't get to it. So you have to put that positive cable on first, tighten it up, and then you can slide your alternator back into the, into the fully installed position there and uh, get the rest of the stuff snugged up. So as you can see, we got a little bracket down there that that lines up with. And then there's a bolt in the nut that holds it in place. We got these two up here. So far, so good. Got the new coolant filter installed. So that went fine. Lost a little bit of coolant, but not too much. We'll top it off. Figured I'd do that while it's right there and easy to get to. Okay, here we go. The new alternator is in and all hooked up, all plugged in. New coolant filters on and tight. I'm gonna leave the air filter off a little bit so I can just check for leaks easily. Make sure that this alternator is working properly. Got the belt on. And all four batteries are reconnected. Let's go start it up, see how it works. Okay, so here is our voltage gauge right here. We're just gonna keep an eye on that. So there's just under 12, which is about right for when a key is on and engine is off. Oh, much better. Look at that. Now we're charging. That's more like it. The other thing too, on this radio here, it has a voltage reading as well. So if I turn it on here, let's uh, hit display. And there, there we go, there's our battery voltage. Now I found that this radio read uh, about one volt lower than it actually was. I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. So that means we're at about 14.2 volts, which is perfect, right where we need to be. Our, I can already tell the headlights are brighter. Let's get the fog lights here. Oh yeah, much brighter. These headlights were really dim at first. So that's good, that's a good improvement. I'm glad to see that fixed our problem. Now we're ready for cold starts. I don't know why, but here in St. Louis, we always get our coldest weather in February. And uh, it's supposed to get down to around zero over the next week or so. So I'm gonna see how this thing does. I'm gonna let it charge the batteries up and uh, that way we've got some freshly charged batteries that are good to go. So there we have it, the alternator fixed the problem.